So now we're going to talk a little bit about the ACI topology because a, a lot of us are used to our traditional networking topologies and within a lot of data centers that was historically those three tiered architectures where we'd have the access layer, we'd have the distribution layer or what we refer to as the aggregation layer and then the core. And what we typically did is we try to delve out, you know, where do we stop our layer two, where do we do layer three, and a lot of that was due in part to the fact that we had to run spanning tree within our layer two domains as our basic loop prevention mechanism, right? Uh, spanning tree was our control plane protocol for layer two. So this changes a little bit with ACI uh, in that we're, we're using more of like a CLOS or CLOS architecture. And let, let's, let's dive in, let me get my, my head out of the way here and we can take a look at this. So what we have and what you're kind of looking at here would be an example of like an ACI fabric. So these switches here at the top of this architecture are going to be what we refer to as our spine switches and these guys down here are going to be what we refer to as our as our leaf nodes. And this is kind of representative of what we saw within fabric path as well or what's what's now known as DFA. Um, we had a spine leaf architecture with that and there's a lot of the same little nuances as well uh, between you know fabric path and ACI. ACI of course uses you know VXLAN um, but the the kind of smooshed down topology rather than having that that gigantic three tiered architecture. Remember with with the three tier, you know, this would be like our ag layer, this would be our, our leaf layer, or sorry, <laughs> uh, our access layer. Let me see if I can back that back that thing up. Let's go back here. This would be our access layer, and then this would be our core. So it changes a little bit, right, with, with ACI because now we don't have uh, those three tiers. We're really just dealing with, with the two. So let's get, let's get rid of these. So again, these are going to be our, our spines and our leaves. So what you'll see with ACI is that typically all of our, our layer two is going to stop kind of right here with these leaves. So everything layer two will be will be down here. Let's draw in some some happy little blue links. So like these would all be layer two connections. Let's forget that these are apex for a minute. Just pretend that these are our normal hosts. So maybe this is you know host one, this is host two, and this is host three. We could even come down here and we could attach uh, you know non-ACI switches to these guys. And this would kind of be where our layer two stops because everything up here within the fabric between our spines and our leaves, uh, all of this is gonna be layer three routed, okay? And what we, what we are gonna find that we use uh, within the ACI fabric for our underlay routing, which is what, what's going to be routing all these links, is, is actually IS to IS or intermediate system to intermediate system. So again, some similarities there with, with fabric path in regards to the control plane protocol that we're using within there. And it was chosen again for a lot of reasons. Uh, you know, no IP dependency, of course, the ability to do, uh, you know, inherent equal cost multipathing, the, uh, the ability to carry um, other type link values. So this ACI fabric, this spine leaf topology, what we're going to find is right now um, with the current versions, at least what I've deployed, these are all going to be um, 40 gigabit per second connections, while down here we'll still have the ability to do our 1 and 10 gig connections down to the end host. Okay, so these are all uh, currently 40 gig um, by die optics. So again, you can reuse your existing cabling plants um, for a lot of those connections. So 40 gig, um, again, a lot of the benefits that we're going to get out of this is that we can do you know, equal cost multipathing. We're going to talk a little bit more about that here in just a little while. Um, and what you'll find from a device capability or a device model perspective is typically these spine switches that you guys see up here, these are going to be our 9500 series spine switches. So basically uh, our modular switches within the 9K lineup. Though we do have the ability to use say this 9336 as a spine switch as well, which is one of the 9300 fixed models. And I'm going to show you guys that within the CCIE data center version two blueprint, let me get my cursor back here. Come on cursor. Um, whoa, let's 
click plus. Within this new um, blueprint for the lab exam, again, version two, you can see that we're gonna have an actual 9336 spine switch. Uh, and again, that, that's because it has that application spine engine ASIC within it. And then these are gonna be our leaf switches. Okay, so we're gonna be using the 9372s as our ACI leaves. So those are the two that I want you to get real familiar with. There's also, um, if your company's interested, there is what they refer to as an ACI lab bundle. And the ACI lab bundle is actually a, I think you can get a 9330, uh, one 9330, 9336 spine, so we'd have our 9336 spine switch, and then we'll also have these 9372 leaf switches. So we, we do have this lab bundle that has a single spine and two leaves, so we'd be connected something like that. And then we're also gonna get um, one APIC, which we haven't talked about yet. It's gonna be the controller where we do basically all the configuration, uh, and that APIC can connect up to you know, a, a single or dual leaf switches. So the ACI lab bundle would give you sort of this ACI topology that you could you know, play around with. And that's actually what I do um, you know, a lot of my work on is developing these lab bundles uh, and pushing them out to clients so that they can kind of play with ACI. So again, this is what's gonna be on the lab exam version two blueprint. I believe at cost, this is around um, $100,000 for this ACI lab bundle. And don't quote me on that, that was the last time I looked. Um, a lot of Cisco partners can get, you know, can get this NFR'd. So you can get you know quite quite a chunk taken off of that, but you're still looking at you know approximately twenty thousand dollars to get an ACI lab bundle NFR'd in. So it, it, it is an option for a lot of people though. There's also the ACI simulator that you can play with, but that's still going to run you about twenty k, um, and you can't really pass traffic through anything with the ACI sim. So going back over here. Let's go back to this. Um, those are typically going to be your spine switches. So again, the 9336 or the 9500 more modular switches. And the 9500s can have um, you know, 40 gig, 100 gig line cards in them that give you the capability to either be a spine or a leaf or basically just like a top of rack. Um, we're also going to have the 9300 typically fixed switches. Um, that are going to be acting as our as our leaves, and, and these are typically going to be what we refer to as the TOR or top of rack switch. So these are going to be the guys that we actually hang clients off of. Okay, so when, when we have servers, when we have other switches, um, we're going to be connecting those guys uh, to those leaf nodes. Now there are a couple caveats when you start constructing these topologies. Um, for instance, you can never cable a leaf to a leaf. So if I tried to run a cable between these two guys that would not be allowed. Um, we also could not run a cable between two spines. Again, this is something that is uh, just not allowed uh, at this point in time. Uh, and the system will pick up on this. Um, basically within the fabric, we're gonna see that we're always running the um, link layer discovery protocol or LLDP. And leveraging this, they also have a protocol called MCP or the miscabling protocol. And basically, MCP is going to pick up, you know, if you cable up two leaf switches, leaf switches together or two spine switches together, uh, or if you try to hook a host up to a spine switch, for instance. Um, you, you, you can't do that either. So there's, there's quite a few nuances, but again, LLD, the combination LLDP and the miscabling protocol are going to pick that up, and they're basically going to bring down those links. Okay, so, so typically your, your clean slate, how you're always going to see this cabled is you're going to have a, a spine or multiple spine switches, and these guys are going to be connected to every ACI leaf switch. So basically, every leaf has a connection to every spine. Uh, again, no leaf to leaf, no spine to spine communications. Okay. Now, we do this because we're able to leverage equal cost multipathing. So say, again, let's forget that these, these are drawn in as APICs right now. Uh, just pretend that we, we have you know, host one, we have host two, and we have host three. 
We have the capability, if you think that maybe host one wants to communicate to host three, when we go to, to send those frames, as they come up the wire here to that leaf switch, he's actually got three equal cost paths. He could go this way, this way, or this way in order to reach host three, right? Because again, if, if we stuck some, some just fake costs on here, if this was a cost, each link was a cost of 10, he'd have a cost of 10 here, a cost of 10 here, a cost of 10 here, a cost of 10 here a cost of 10 here, a cost of 10 here. So any of those are applicable equal cost paths, right? Because they, they ultimately have the same cost in this scenario of 20. So the ability to do ECMP, and typically what you're gonna see is that much like with Fabric Path or even Port Channels, any given flow is always gonna uh, follow uh, the same traditional path, okay? There are some, some caveats to that uh, where we can break stuff apart, but we're not gonna get into that at this point in time. Uh, just know that we do leverage equal cost multipathing, and that's one of the inherent benefits of using uh, the, these clause type topologies, okay? Let me erase my board here. So the ACI topology in a nutshell, even though like the physical ACI topology view um, might look something like this. Uh, logically, to anything outside of the fabric, we really look more like just a single switch. And, and if you think about how this is kind of constructed, right, imagine a box around this topology. The, these leafs, even though they, they have many ports, imagine them for a second like they were just a single port. So this would be a front panel port, this would be a front panel port, this would be a front panel port, this would be a front panel port. So from a, a, a cabling perspective, that holds true, right? Because we're always gonna connect you know, our servers or our, our, our switches or our hosts into our, our leaf switches. These spines are, are really like, uh, I, I don't wanna say they're the, the, the brains, but they're really like the, the old ethernet out of band channel, right? This is the, the basically the internal bandwidth of, of this logical switch that we're building because we're just, we're going through those guys, right? We're going through these guys, we're going through this guy. Uh, so it's really like just the, the internal fabric for this switch. Uh, that's, that's how we scale our bandwidth out within ACI is, you know, how, how, how do we add more, more, more lanes um, to this topology? And really that's just coming in here and adding another spine switch, right? And then we cable that guy up to all the leaves. If we need more, we add another spine switch. We cable that guy up to all the leaves. And, and now, basically, we, we're giving ourselves the ability to almost seamlessly scale this fabric. Okay, because again, the, the underlay routing, which we're gonna learn as IS to IS, is just gonna pick up these, these new adjacencies, add them to the equal cost multipathing tables, and we get to move forward with, with life. Now, again, part of VXLAN, if you haven't taken the VXLAN course or looked at uh, any of the, the VXLAN videos that are out there, there, there's two real components to VXLAN. Um, VXLAN is composed of an underlay, and then the part we deal a little bit more with, which is the overlay, okay? So ACI, and I have APIC here, this should, this should read ACI. Um, ACI uses VXLAN. Uh, and we're not using the exact formatted header as just traditional VXLAN. There are some variations to the VXLAN header within the implementation of ACI, um, but we do leverage AC, uh, VXLAN within ACI. Now for the underlay, what we're gonna find is that in here within this cloud, again, we're using intermediate, intermediate system to intermediate system to basically form those adjacencies and to advertise what we're gonna learn our VTEP or our VXLAN tunnel endpoint addresses between all of the different switches. Now, if you've dealt with IS to IS a lot in the past, you know there's two types of adjacencies. You have L1 adjacencies, and then you have your L1 to L2 adjacencies. We are strictly dealing with L1 adjacencies. And again, this is uh, one of the similarities to Fabric Pass, so we have no L1 to L2 uh, adjacencies. These are all gonna be internal L1 adjacencies between these spine switches and these leaf switches, 
Okay, so what we're going to do for the underlay is we're going to leverage IS to IS to form these adjacencies, and these are going to be on what we call IP unnum uh, unnumbered interfaces. And as we start to build out the fabric, we're going to learn uh, that each one of these switches is going to get a loopback zero. Okay, and this is a, um, a basically a unique IP address to those particular switches. Okay, and we're going to we're going to learn what this is all about, but basically we're going to see that we leverage these as our VTEP addresses as well. So this loopback zero is basically going to be used uh, because all of these other physical interfaces are just going to say IP unnumbered loopback zero. Okay, so we're going to form adjacencies um, using those IP unnumbered uh, connections. And again, that is how basically ACI advertises these VTEP or these VXLAN tunnel endpoint addresses between all of these different nodes. So this guy, so if this is VTIP1 and this guy is VTIP2, the underlay is basically going to announce that, hey, you go through me or you go through me or you go through me to reach VTIP2. Okay, likewise, this guy will have the ability uh, to go up through this guy, he'd have the ability to go up through this guy, or he'd have the ability to go up through this guy if he wanted to reach VTIP1. So again, that is basically what the underlay is there for. It's there to advertise those VXLAN tunnel endpoint addresses between all of the different nodes within the fabric. Okay, and this is how we're going to form basically our VXLAN tunnels on the overlay side. Uh, we're also going to see that this generates um, these F tag trees, and again, if you guys have dealt a lot with Fabric Path in the past, um, these F tag trees are basically uh, what we used to refer to as our multi destination trees. We'll find with um, with ACI that we're going to build 16 of these trees, uh, no matter what. So if we have uh, 16 divided by 3, this is going to be uh, the responsibility basically of these spine switches. So if we had four spines, so if I added another spine switch to this equation, this 16 would be dist distributed pretty equally. Like this guy may be 0 through 3, this guy may be 4, 5, 6, and 7, this guy may be 8 through 11, and this guy would be 12 through 15. Okay, so each one of those would have basically an equal distribution of those F tag trees. Of course, if you have an odd number, some are going to have more than others. But again, this is how we route a lot of that multi destination traffic within the ACI fabric. <clears throat> now, we'll also find that we have this thing called the APIC. And the APIC is actually the ACI controller. Okay, this is where we're going to see that we do all of our moves, adds, changes, and deletes. Um, now, one of the most important parts about the APIC is even though we're doing a lot of our configuration on these APICs, so again, this guy, this guy, or this guy, the APIC is not in the control or data plane. Okay, and that says data plan, but it should be data plane of the fabric, meaning it, it, it's not like a. It, Imagine that we have a host over here. And imagine that this host sends some data in, right? And we, we kind of explained in the introduction video that some sort of policy is going to be applied to that guy as he enters the fabric, right? That, that, that those leaf switches, these guys are basically our enforcement point. So what this is saying when it says it's not the control plane, it, it means that basically as this packet arrives up here and, and we know we need to enforce some policy, this guy is not going to go out here and say, you know, query this guy like, oh, what do I do? Okay, uh, that would be kind of a control plane function. We, we don't do that. Okay, we do not do that. So it, it is not in the control plane. Basically, we'll come into this guy. So every, you know, Tom, Dick, and Sally, we'll, we'll come into the APIC and do the configuration on that. But once that configuration is put in here and the APIC knows that a certain policy needs to be pushed out to this guy, we are gonna go ahead and send that policy information to those leaf nodes that need it, all right? That way as these frames arrive in, we can go ahead and apply that policy and forward that data on. Make sense? And when we say it's not in the data plane, let me get a clean slate here. When we say this guy's not in the data plane, again, if we, have, if we have a host here that wants to send data into the fabric, imagine he sends a frame in, we're never going to send that through the APIC and then back out to the fabric. 
okay? That, that'll never happen. So it's not in the control plane and it's not in the data plane. That being said, could you lose your APIC and, and have the fabric still functioning if you already had it configured? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, in that regard, it's a lot like the, uh, the VSM for the 1000V because the VSM's not really in the control plane or the data plane either, right? Uh, and you can lose the VSM, but, but when you lose the VSM, it's much like when you lose the APIC, you, you basically don't have the ability to do any of this stuff anymore. You can't do any moves, adds, changes, or deletes. Basically, you have uh, no visibility into the fabric at that point. And, and that, guys and gals, is, is why Cisco actually requires that you have to have three or more APICs um, for redundancy and for quorum, okay? Uh, so if you're going into a production-based environment, uh, it will be required that you have at least three APICs within your topology. Now you'll see again, I talked about the lab bundle a little while ago, the lab bundle only had a single APIC. So can you configure and, and get an ACI um, fabric up and running with just a single APIC? Absolutely. Absolutely, but you are forever going to have this warning uh, basically at the top saying, uh, I don't know the exact verbiage, but it's something to the extent like uh, your fabric only has one APIC. Do not go to production. And it's always at the top and it's always this big red banner at the very top of your web browser. Um, so it, they definitely do let you know that you're running you know, less than optimally from an APIC standpoint. Um, now what we'll find is that uh, typically when we go into these guys, we're gonna wanna cable these guys you know, dual homed off of our leaf switches. Um, these are gonna be uh, 10 gig connections from the APIC controller. And the, I think the latest release for like a medium size APIC, uh, you're gonna get that C220 um, M4 as your, um, as your APIC controller. And that is a pre-built uh, appliance. Again, Cisco preloads uh, the, the C220M4 with the APIC software in it. And again, that runs a variant of uh, CentOS. So it, again, you can't just take a normal C-series server and load the APIC software on there. It doesn't work like that. These are gonna be um, tried and true, hardened, pre-installed appliances coming straight from Cisco. And again, they're gonna have a VIC card in them that you use to connect to your ACI switches. So you can single home these guys. Cisco does recommend uh, to, to dual home where possible. Again, they're, they're really there and you have multiple APICs for redundancy purposes, um, because what's gonna happen is, as you go in and you perform configuration on these guys, so as we come in here and we uh, place some config on there, what's gonna happen is that data is gonna be what they call sharded, and I think I've got it in here somewhere, yeah. It's gonna be sharded across those nodes, meaning as you configure something, uh, we're gonna have replicas out there. So like this guy's gonna get a shard, this guy's gonna get a shard, this guy's gonna get a shard. Uh, you go in and do other configs, this guy's gonna get a shard, this guy's gonna get a shard, this guy's gonna get a shard. So you have um, basically your shards and then your shards have replicas. So with you know three different Apex in here, basically everyone's gonna have a copy of the data. Okay, um, the APIC is, again, the place that we're gonna go to for most of our config, especially with throughout this course, all of our configuration, we're not gonna be doing any scripting, we're not gonna be doing any of that. Uh, we're gonna be going directly to the APIC IP address uh, within a web browser. And I'll tell you guys, again, from an experience standpoint, um, I've had luck running it on Internet Explorer, I've had luck running it on Firefox, and I've had some luck running it with Chrome, um, but I've had a lot of problems running it in Safari. So I'm a Mac guy, and uh, I've tried browsing uh, uh, a couple hundred times using Safari, and it's been nothing but trouble. Um, Internet Explorer's given me trouble quite a few times as well. 
So really my go-tos for accessing the APIC now are either Firefox or Chrome. And again, that's just, it may be different for you guys, but I'll, I'm just telling you uh, from my experience, that's, what, that's what's happened to me. So um, typically the APIC is gonna be accessed via one of these two web browsers from my standpoint, uh, and basically just browsing to the IP address of one of these guys, okay? Now, We'll also talk a little bit, and this is one of the demos that's coming up, is gonna be the fabric discovery process. So as you basically come in and cable up your ACI fabric, so you may cable it up and it may look, you know, exactly like this. We're actually gonna be, um, as the administrators, going into one of these APIC controllers. So let's say that we choose this guy to console into. So we could hook you know, a, a KVM up to this guy. Uh, you could, as this server boots, you could hit you know, F8 and go through the SIMC configuration utility, um, assign it an IP address, and you could access the SIMC at that point and thus the KVM from within the SIMC. And I'll tell you again, just per me, this is usually the method that I, that I use. I'll, I'll, I'll usually hook up you know, to it via a, a keyboard, video, and mouse to the C-Series server itself initially, and I'll immediately set up the SIMC. And that, again, is just something that I do uh, normally. But what's gonna happen is you're gonna get kind of this um, text-based setup utility. And it's gonna ask you for some names, how many um, APIC controllers you have, what multicast range you wanna use, um, what the uh, out-of-band management IP address is gonna be for this specific APIC controller. Um, and, and then you're gonna have, you know, after you do that initial configuration, you're gonna have one of the two NICs on this guy is basically gonna be an active NIC and the other's gonna be standby. So let's say this one, this one's our standby. So initially we're gonna see, you know, this leaf first. Well, what, what happens as you go through that setup utility is you actually build basically this big address pool. And this, this address pool is what's gonna be used for basically our, our VTIP addressing within the fabric. So I think the default is actually gonna be 10 0, 0, 0, slash 16. Um, you, you could change that if you, if you want, but these addresses are never really gonna be reachable um, outside of the fabric. Okay, uh, we're also gonna set up a VLAN and, and typically I think I'm gonna use VLAN 4. This VLAN 4 is gonna be what we refer to as our infra or infrastructure VLAN and I think I have it down here, put infrastructure VRF. Um, but this is gonna be the VLAN that we use to basically discover and send out IP addressing to the different fabric members. Okay, so the, basically the spine and leaf switches. So what's gonna happen as we go through this fabric discovery process is remember within the fabric, LLDP is explicitly enabled. We, we can't turn it off. So uh, I know the arrow here is kind of just showing, you know, LLDP going one way, but really LLDP is kind of flowing in both directions. So what happens, you know, once we get everything cabled up and once we do the initial configuration on the, the primary APIC, is LLDP starts to kind of do its thing. So, uh, you know, this leaf switch will be sending out LLDP frames and using some uh, ACI, what I call ACI specific type link values here, uh, specifically in OUI, we're gonna be able to see that there is an ACI component at the other end. And what happens once that leaf switch sees that APIC controller, it's gonna go ahead and get its loopback IP address uh, handed out from this pool that we created during the initial config setup. And again, this is all gonna be done within that infrastructure VRF, okay? And again, that's gonna be riding on that infrastructure VLAN. So this guy is gonna pull uh, a, a VTIP or a loopback zero address, and then we're gonna find that the fabric basically automatically, automatically converges after this. So what, what we as the administrator have to do during the fabric um, set up is we're gonna give this guy a name. So maybe we're gonna say, you're gonna be leaf one, we're gonna give him an ID. Um, the IDs are gonna to have to start, the, the lower bound is 101, so we're gonna to have to basically go from 101 up. Uh, but once we assign this information to this leaf switch, um, he's gonna go ahead and pull 
his DHCP address, and then basically the fabric just starts converging. So we'll, we'll see again through LODP that we'll discover one of these spine switches next. Um, we might come in and say, you're gonna be you know, spine one, uh, maybe you're gonna be ID 201, and then the fabric just kind of continues to fold out. Like he'll pull an IP address at that point, uh, LLDP will find all the other switches, we'll, we'll give them a name and an ID as well, and basically at that point, our fabric will be discovered, okay? Our fabric will be discovered. Now using what we call an appliance vector, and that's just a term that you'll see, uh, we'll have this appliance vector. When we did the initial, or when we go through the initial setup, it asks us, how many APIX are you gonna have? So if we put in, hey, we're gonna have three APICs, I'm gonna be APIC one. Um, once the fabric discovery process gets to these other APIC controllers, uh, and they're within the same appliance vector, um, they're gonna go ahead and join the cluster. Okay, so now all of these APICs are basically gonna be clustered together, uh, and that's kind of our end result. <clears throat> so this is the, the fabric discovery process. The next thing that we'll see, uh, again, I'm, I'm gonna go through a demo that'll be the, the following video to this. Uh, our, our ACI bootstrapping is gonna look exactly like this. We, basically, we have you know, a spine out here. We've got two leaves, so we're gonna have you know, leaf one, and leaf two. Uh, I also just have a single APIC. He is dual home to both of these leaf switches. I'm not sure which one's active and which one's standby. We very well could have, you know, um, the active link could be over here to leaf two, uh, and then the standby link could be over to leaf one. And if that is the case, basically the first switch that we're gonna discover is leaf two, and then we'll discover this spine, and then we'll discover this leaf. So we'll be able to verify using um, serial numbers which one we're hitting first, okay? We'll be able to verify pretty cleanly which one we're actually gonna hit first. So again, this is all gonna be done through the use of uh, link layer discovery protocol um, and, and basically a DHCP-ish process. Uh, we'll also be able to go in or um, console in to each of these leaves, and we should be able to see after this the loopback zero and the IP address that's been assigned to each of those loopback zeros being pulled from the pool that we have actually configured during the bootstrapping process uh, on the APIC, okay? Uh, now from a, a much more grandioso scale, our entire topology for all of our labs and demonstrations is gonna look a little bit like this. Uh, again, we're, we're gonna have our spine switch. Uh, we're gonna have an out-of-band management pool that we're gonna be using, um, leaf two, leaf one. And then basically I've got a couple fabric interconnects hooked up. Um, I have switch two two and switch two one, which are basically just two external Nexus switches. Um, that we'll be doing layer two and layer three configurations towards. Uh, we of course have our APIC up here in the middle, and then I have an ESXi host. So we, we've got a couple, actually I think three VMs. I've got a web VM, an app VM, and a database VM all riding on this ESXi host. So we'll do some integration with that as well. So this is kind of what the grand scheme of all our demos are gonna look like throughout the remainder of this course. So in the next video, um, what we'll be doing is we'll actually be demonstrating the bootstrapping of the APIC controller. So we'll go ahead and do that bootstrap. We'll go through the initial setup on the console, and then we will go in to, we kind of get our first glimpse into the APIC GUI, and we will go through the fabric discovery process. Because again, there's, there's two real configuration components to ACI, as you guys are gonna see it. There's gonna be like the physical fabric configuration and then what we call the tenant configuration. So really we're, we're gonna mainly for the first couple demos and the first couple exercises, we're really gonna be doing uh, mainly physical fabric config.